Hello, welcome to The Horticulturalist. I am Matthew Lucas. And I'm Stephen Ryan. And we post every week on a Friday, so if you want to follow our continuing adventures, do hit subscribe and join us every Friday. And don't forget, we have our shorts on Monday, so if you've got a burning horticultural question that you'd like me to answer, I will do so hopefully in 60 seconds on our Monday shorts, so just put it in the comment below. And also, of course, tell me where you are so that I can get context. And if you get even more inspired to pursue your horticultural adventure, you might want to consider joining the Royal Horticultural Society, although I have heard their patron is a bit tricky. Yeah, well, what can I say? As the patron of the Royal Horticultural Society of Victoria, I represent that remark. So there you go. <laughs> we'll put the link below. Now, mm. spring is in the air, yes. and I can smell something, Stephen. Yes, you, you definitely can, because hiding right behind us... Look behind you. ...is a bunch of hybrid lilac. Mm. Exquisite, beautiful, <laughs> gorgeous, and I wouldn't plant one. Why? All right. They're stunning in flower, mm. uh, but they're probably, at best, two-week wonders. Yeah. So lilacs tend to flower. They do the whole thing within a fortnight. Mm. They take up a lot of room. They can be quite big, bulky bushes. Their foliage is coarse. The bush is very sticky and twiggy. You're not painting a great picture. No, and but I love them as a cut flower. And I was actually at our local horticultural society the other night, and I was relating this story as I was chatting to the members. And one of the members had these beautiful lilac in the actual competition table. Yeah. And I said, what I want people to do is grow them in their garden and give me bunches of lilac. So at the end of the meeting, she came over with a bunch of lilac. So I, I got a free bunch of beautiful hybrid lilac, which I don't then have to grow in my own garden. But Stephen, what would you grow in your uh -huh. own garden? Aha, and that is the story of today. We're going to right. look at some of the early hybrids and species lilacs, which in general are smaller growing, so they don't take up as much room, yeah. so you can forgive them mm. a little bit. Mm. They also don't have foliage that's quite as coarse. Some of them even get slightly good autumn colour before uh, they shed. Yeah. And although they're not as sumptuous as the big hybrid lilacs, mm. I think they make better garden plants. So we're going to have a look at them. Okay, well, without further ado, sorry, <laughs> overblown hybrids, let's go. <laughs> yes, we're off. Well, Stephen, this whole story began because I asked you, we were walking around the garden, yeah. what is this glorious shrub? Yes. What is it? Well, this is the Persian lilac, mm. or Syringa persica. Yeah. Now, there's some dispute as to whether persica is actually a wild species. Uh, Kew Botanic Gardens tend to suggest it is. Yeah. But there's a lot of other people who say it's some sort of hybrid that may have arisen in nature mm. or way back in antiquity in gardens because yes. this has been around for a long time. Yeah. And the name sort of gives it away a bit because it comes from that sort of Middle Eastern area, Persian lilac. All right. Let's start at the beginning then. Mm. So... The species lilacs, where are they from? Is it a tight geographical area? Uh, well, they grow right through the Middle East up into Afghanistan, northern India, and across into sort of western China mainly. So it's that it is sort quite, of general. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although Vulgaris extends into Europe. So there, you know, it, it has got a reasonably broad, broad range, but mm. it's all Europe, Middle East, and into yes. Asia. And then in terms of the hybrids we were just looking at, the, yeah. the, the lilacs everyone's very familiar with, when did they sort of emerge as a common hybrid mm. in horticulture? Well, they're bred from Vulgaris, mm. uh, the common lilac, uh, and they've been very popular in Europe for a long, long time. Mm. But they certainly took off in the sort of late 1800s into early 1900s when lots of breeders got to work on them and started breeding them and breeding them and breeding them. So they mm. ended up with big flower heads, Strong perfume, which is interesting because perfume is often regressive, mm. but a lot of the hybrids have a really good scent. Mm. Um, and they got new colours, they got double flowered ones, but as a whole, the bushes are all rather homogenous. They all look very similar. Yeah. Uh, so they lost the sort of individuality that a lot of the species will give, mm. but they gained perfume and they gained flower variety. So they were happy with that. But I have to say, they're not only gawky, but they're not often grown on their own roots because they sucker all over the place. Yes. And so they graft them, at least in Australia, and I think they still do it in lots of other areas, onto Ligustrum, the privet. And quite often people will say, why has my lilac gone white flowered and smelly? And it's because their understock has grown mm. uh, and, of course, is slowly taking over from the lilac above. Well... Let's not talk about those. Yes. Let's talk about this, which is beautiful. All right. So 
It is probably, it's about a metre tall, like yeah. four feet. Yes, round about. Is this... It's, it's not It's not going to get greatly bigger than that. I mean, yep. it could eventually push itself up to two metres. Mm. And this is the white version of the Persian lilac. Mm. And I'll let you in on a secret. We're going to visit a friend's garden. Uh -huh, yes. And she's got the wild mauve form in her garden. Yep. And we've just made a pact that we're going to swap. So, <laughs> so I'm going to get some of the wild mauve one. And mm. my friend Kathy's going to end up with a white one in her garden. Now, I love the form. It's kind of slightly mm. draping. Yeah. And the leaves are fine and dainty. Yes. The flowers don't have that sumptuousness that the hybrids have but it's a really how can you say it's like a fluoro white it's a yep. strong yep. white and if you look at it really closely it's got almost a bluey purple yes. center to the trumpet and so it's a really pretty little shrub mm. and the lilacs of course are generally fairly tough they'll cope mm. with well you can grow them in Canada you can grow them in northern Europe so uh, all through Scandinavia and things so they'll cope with the cold including all the species. Yeah, all the species at. ones, as far as I know, will also cope quite well with very cold climates. Mm. They're not good in hot heat dry. <laughs> well, heat dry to an extent, but not heat wet. So hot tropical climates, you right. won't grow lilacs. They yeah. need a winter chill mm. and they hate that sort of damp humidity of a of a hot tropical summer Fair so enough. they'd probably I do as well <laughs> yeah you know, i'm not good unless i'm sitting under a palm tree with a pina colada in those sort of climates oh, but uh you're so 70s yes i am so 70s but there you go but anyhow so this is the white version of mm. syringa persica and whether it's a species or not is still a moot point but there you go now you did allude that some of them have autumn foliage is this one this one just goes yellowish but mm. some of the others will actually give you a respectable autumnal foliage okay. and we will look at a couple of those as well all right and just to try and give you an idea of the fragrance it's a much crisper leaner fragrance yeah, than yeah. the very heavy bouquet yeah, it's not hybrid. as sort of sumptuous but as you're the, walking yeah. past you're very aware of it it's oh, still yeah. a beautiful fragrance yeah, it's still a good plant for and fragrance. can you cut these will they last as a cut flower uh like... yes you'll get a, uh, a week or two out of them in a vase if you pick them when they're fresh mm. so they still can be used for cut flowers but yeah they don't quite have the same flower power and you were one of your criticisms of the hybrids was the short flowering period yeah what about the species this one particularly uh well they don't have much longer flowering period but my argument is that they don't take up as much room either right. so i can forgive it it's like if i plant a flowering cherry and get a week out of it it's a great big tree and it's probably not paying its way mm. but if i plant a clump of crocuses and they only last me a few days they're only taking up that much room and i'm actually quite happy with that because I can enjoy them for a very short time, be terribly excited by it. They'll disappear, but I haven't taken up a huge amount of room. There you go. So it's about room as much as anything. Ruthless Ryan. Yep, well, that's me. let's go and look at another one, which is right behind us. Yes, let's. So Stephen, this one doesn't look quite out yet. Yeah, this is just opening. The few of the flowers are out on it. And this one around the trade, at least in Australia, is sold as Syringa Myri Palabin, mm. uh, the dwarf Korean lilac. Mm. So that gives you a hint of where it probably comes from. So Asia. But I thought they were all from... Yeah, into China. And so, yes, yeah, so Asian as well. Okay, so we're spreading now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think we yeah. went all the way to Korea, but there yeah, we are. There we are. Now, apparently this could actually now be um, Syringa pubescens subspecies pubescens. But nonetheless, uh, <laughs> the dwarf Korean lilac will do. Now, this one has a slight scent when it's out in full bloom, but again, not a, an overly strong scent. Oh yeah, scent. I can smell it already. Yeah, it has pert little leaves. They're very pretty leaves. Yeah, so even in the summer, it has some presence in the garden because the foliage is pretty. Mm. Uh, it's basically fully grown, so just under two metres, I'd say, yep. is about maximum. This one's been in the garden probably 12, 15 years or more. Mm. And the good thing about this one, we mentioned the potential for autumn colour. Ah, yes. And this is one of them. This one will colour quite prettily in the autumn. Mm. It often gets sort of yellow with a little bit of purpley, bronzy colours through it. Yeah. Um, and so for the autumn period, it can actually look rather rather sweet as well. Mm. So I think it does pay its way and it does make a nice sort of mounded, tidy bush without being clipped looking. And it's probably twice as wide as it is high. Yeah, it's taking up this whole bed. In fact, I'm probably going to have to do a, a little bit of pruning, which I haven't had to do thus far. Which brings me to the question I was going to ask. So obviously every tip basically has a mm. flower bud. So what do you do when the flowers have finished? Do you have to prune off the dead ends? Uh, yeah, well, with these small dainty species ones, it's not so vital. They, yeah. they, 
you know, they're there, but they're not so obvious. Yep. With the big hybrids, you really do have to go through and prune the dead flower heads out of them because mm. they're like great big brown chamois hanging in the in the bush and they can look truly awful. Yep. Uh, so the species lilacs with their daintier flower heads, you could go over and trim them off mm. and encourage new growth from below. Mm. I don't remember ever doing that and it's never been something that has worried me. Right. So I'm quite happy just to let nature take its course and for this dwarf Korean lilac to do its thing. And it doesn't look messy. I mean, you can, if you looked, maybe see the odd oh, you can see the odd little dead bit. twiggy yeah. bits that were old flower heads. Yeah, but yeah, it doesn't really make any impact. No, it's fabulous, and it's just it's like a punctuation mark on the on the return of a gravel path. Yes, and it's a beautiful statement yeah, there. It does. It, it it makes a good sort of end of border plant without trying to be too self-conscious, you know, by having a, a narrow pencil pine or a trim topiary or whatever. Right. So, yeah, so it's it's a bit more natural, but I love it. So in the trade, you'll see it as Myri palibon usually, but it would seem that it's a um, species lilac uh, that is now considered to be pubescent, which means slightly furry, and subspecies pubescent, so it's tautology as well. Oh, there you go. Taxonomist, I yeah. get out more, I say. Yeah. Well, talking of getting out, we need to get out of this frame and yeah. just into this frame yes. because this lovely leafy plant here yeah. has no flowers on it, Stephen. No. What's and going on? I don't know, in fact. I think possibly the seasons we've had the last couple of years. This is another syringa or lilac. Yeah. And again, in the trade, it's generally sold as Syringa patula, mm. and this selection is one called Miss Kim. But again, patula is probably just pubescens, but subspecies patula. So again, it's a bit confusing. Now, this has nice little mauve flower heads, a yep. bit like the Korean lilac to yep. look at, which would make sense if they're both of the same species. Mm. Its leaf is bigger, longer, and, and more tapered. And this one is probably the creme de la creme of lilacs for its autumn colour. Right. So its flowers are pretty in the spring, but you know, they're much the same as my eye. In my garden, they flower about a couple of weeks apart if this one was going to flower this year. Mm. Uh, so I get another couple of weeks of little mauve flowers, which are pretty. But the autumn color on this one is lovely in shades of orange and purple and yellow, depending on how much light the plant uh, or the leaves get at the, um, in the particular position it is in the mm. garden. And I think it's a great plant. And again, it's that sort of two meters each way-ish. Mm. Uh, so a nice, neat, easy growing shrub that just fills a gap nicely. Now why, so there are, you can see there's a few buds on it, but mm. why would it just not have decided to flower this year? I mean, plants do do yeah, that. Look, some plants cycle. do have their seasons off mm. and it could just be that. Although I remember it flowering pretty well every year, most years. Mm. Maybe it knew we were going to film it this year. <laughs> but I mean, it looks amazingly healthy. There's lots yeah. of new growth oh, yeah. and it's it's doing doing all the other things it should do. You know, it will flower again next year. I just think it's probably due to not having enough summer heat last summer to ripen up the wood properly. But having said that, I've got a friend who's got one that is flowering. Should we go and have a look? Yeah, let's go to Kathy's, I think. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a bower of lilac, goodness. Yep. It's fantastic, isn't it? Oh. Now this one falls between camps a little bit. Mm. It is an early hybrid. Mm. Uh, in Australia, it's unfortunately being sold as Persica. And we've just seen my white Persica. This is <gasps> nothing like it. Very different. Yes. Uh, so although you see it around in Australia as Persica, it's actually, I understand, Syringa chinensis, which is a weird thing to call it because it was actually discovered as a hybrid in a, in a garden in Rouen in France. Right. And they thought it was of Chinese origin, so they called it chinensis. So if you're going to write the name now, you'd put Syringa X Chinensis, and it's now commonly known as the Rouen Lilac. Right. So it is stunningly beautiful. Mm. Uh, it's much more elegant than the normal hybrid lilacs. I love this arching yeah. habit. It has a little bit of a scent. Its foliage is smaller and daintier. Yes. Uh, and it is certainly a worthy lilac to have in any garden, mm. I think. In fact, it's now actually got me going and I think I need to find spot for a Rouen lilac in my garden, which I haven't got at this stage. Yes. Now, um, height wise, where are we at? Is this as big as it's Yeah, this again? is about it. So about the two and a half meter-ish height. Yeah. I mean, once it stops flowering, the branches will bounce back up a little bit again because they've arched over with the weight of flowers. So Goodness. yeah, so about, about two, two and a half meters and that would just about seed out. This one has a lightly suckering habit, but not madly so, so it's comparatively easy to manage. And because it's not grafted, it makes a much more naturalistic looking bush. 
And I, this is the thing, I'm really seeing the difference between the form of those hybrid bushes and mm. the form of the, I mean, this is a hybrid, but the earlier ones, yeah. they're much more elegant and yeah. they sort of look more shrubby, I don't know, more natural. Yeah, <laughs> well, and we'll point that out with one that's just over there. Okay, well, so that's, that's the a, next one to have a look this, at. But, uh, the joy of standing under clouds of lilac lilacs. Yes, all those lilacs. All right. <laughs> all right, there Let's you go. go. Let's go. So what's this one, Stephen? Well, this is one of the uh, European hybrids of uh, Syringa vulgaris, and it's as close to yellow as they've managed to get in a lilac. <laughs> it's, it's very pale cream. Yeah. Uh, it's got the slightly inappropriate name of primrose, because mm -hmm. it's not really primrose yellow, but it does illustrate how the hybrid lilacs grow. If they're grafted onto, a, onto an understock, you tend to have a single trunk, so they become like a small tree. Mm. And although Kathy has managed this one beautifully because yeah. she's pruned it in a very artistic way yeah. it is still much more trunky and stiff and gaunt looking mm. than the wilder style of lilac i must say though the pruning is beautiful because yeah. it looks quite sculptural and the bark's actually not unattractive no it, look it's pleasant enough yeah. but sort of everything is up above your head which yeah. might be all right if you're looking and for a small shade tree fragrance wise yeah yeah a little bit with primrose but yeah. i think some of the mauve and purple ones have a much stronger scent now just looking it looks a little droopy Yes, well, that's just fresh, very, very new growth that's coming out. So, right. so the lilacs are all just coming into their full growth now. Right. Uh, and so they will have slightly soft looking leaves. The leaves will harden up later. Right, there you go. So I think we're going to go and look at some more species. Yes, Kathy's got some species that we should go and have a look at. Let's have a look. I have to say one of the fun things of doing today's story on Syringa is that I've actually found in Kathy's garden one that I've been looking for. And this is actually the mauve form of Syringa persica, so the Persian lilac, the true form, as opposed to chinensis, which we've seen with its much bigger flower heads on it. So this is the wild form of persica. The white one I've got in the garden at home is going to come and live with Kathy at some stage, and this mauve one's going to come home and live with me. Oh. This one, aren't we lucky because another few days, yeah. all over. Yes, this Red one's Rover. already starting to shed flowers across the ground. And oh. so, yes, within a fortnight, there'll be nothing to see. I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite if somewhat confused lilacs out there. <laughs> it's a confused lilac. Well, I'm confused about its name anyway. It's around the traps as Syringa Afghanica which would suggest from, from Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Yeah. If you look up Afghanica in the Q site, they say it's a synonym of uh, Persica, and yet it's a distinct lilac, it's and different. we've already seen two very different yeah. Persicas. Yeah. If you look up what I thought it might be, which is Pinatifolia, the foliage is decidedly divided into completely separate leaflets, whereas this one's slightly attached mm. so it and and the images i can find all tend to be white mm. so it doesn't sound like panatifolia and panata could in fact be a name that could crop up there somewhere but it's certainly not what i would say fitting within the gamut of uh, persica mm. but it has a similar sort of habit it's a much bigger bush the flowers are slightly larger uh, but in a lovely rich mauve yes and the leaf which is the main thing about it we yes. call it the fern leaf lilac uh, in the trade at least here in Australia and if somebody can in fact give me the um, properly accepted name for this one I'd be really pleased so it has this very ferny foliage and so when it finishes flowering it's still a light airy attractive mm. foliage plant mm. and it also can color quite nicely in the autumn Fantastic. so you get that second season out of it yeah. so I think it's a wonderful lilac whether it is in fact panatifolia panata afghanica you say panata yeah, I say panata yeah well you could even say persica <laughs> I don't believe it's persica I think it's far too different to what we know as persica yeah but anyhow the cut leaf lilac or the fern leaf lilac and it really is a splendid uh, um, large deciduous shrub mm. so definitely worthwhile looking out for under whatever name you can find it mm. so to summarize they all basically want the same conditions they oh, all yes. have mm. similar hardiness similar requirements yep. of sun water yep. but they can take heat just not hot yep. humidity yeah they don't like humidity mm. they can take a fair bit of heat during the summer yep. I mean I've seen mine go through 
40 odd degrees Celsius yes. as established plants mm. and things near them have burnt, but the lilacs seem to have come through basically unscathed. And it can even be attendant with a nice hot summer wind Ooh. as well. And so they are remarkably tough and hardy plants. Yeah. Definitely worthwhile considering for the garden. And if you've got acreage, well then go for some of the Volgaris hybrids as well. Yes. And send me bunches. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other, the other general care tip was that these don't need pruning. They don't the... need a lot of pruning. Mm. This one, because it tends to have quite long compound flower heads at the ends of the stems, yeah. it would probably pay to go over it if you have the time and energy mm. and cut back into the foliage after it finishes flowering. Yeah. But most of the others, I've never bothered touching them. They just do their thing. Yeah, well, I've loved it. I've always loved lilacs, but I think I love the ones we've looked at even more. Yeah, well, I think as a garden plant, I think they have yeah. great merit. So yes. we should look at some of these early hybrids and species under whatever name they have. And springtime in Macedon, aren't we lucky to have been here at exactly the right moment for Kathy and yours? Yes, yeah, yes. And what a lovely combination. She had the ones I didn't have and we sort of linked in quite nicely. So there'll be a little bit of propagating material swapping hands, well, I'm sure. There we go. Now, if you want to know what we're doing next week, you'll have to hit subscribe because we post every Friday. Yes, and don't forget, if you've got a burning question... I won't forget. Yes, you can do so by putting it in the comment below, and we will try and deal with it in our Monday shorts. And don't forget to tell me where you're from so that I've got context. Yes, and remember, every plant that we've mentioned in this video will be in the copy below. If you can't see it, just click read more, and bing, there they will be. Yeah. And some of them might be somewhat confusing. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye, all.